Yeah, this kid is a little bit of a mini miss. My burger, my migration, it's a good one. Sie nennen uns Mimimis, mit Burger, mit Migrationshintergrund. Viele von uns sind nie geboren, doch die Herkunft steht immer im Mittelpunkt. Leute fragen mich, woher ich komm. Wo komm so, where are you from? From Berlin. <lacht> right. Ja. Sie sagen, nee, du weißt schon, was ich meine. Dabei war die Antwort richtig. Sie sagen, ich spreche ja toll Deutsch. Wow. Fragen, wo hab ich das nur gelernt? Ich muss runterkommen, ich schwöre, ich roll'n Joint. Und höre auf, die Menschen zu hören. Ich schwöre genauso wie es damals war. Ist es noch immer in der Gegend war. Ich kenne es einmal mehr, es ist eben ja, die Leute wollen sich Wir sind fünf Menschen. We are five people who've come together to make satirical videos. If you think that in 20 or 30 years everyone in Germany will be fair-skinned and blue-eyed, you're naive. This is a very German district, but we have very nice neighbors, really friendly. We're all on good terms. Hey, Yunus, it's Sunday. That's my father. He's pretty German. I'm less so. <laughs> I've always been keen on making videos. But you really need to have an idea or concept to make something meaningful and that people can relate to. It took us three months to come up with the name of our group. It had to be something that we all liked, a name we could all get behind. Dateltäter is a combination of two words, Datel, the German word for date, the fruit, and Attentäter, the German word for assassin. Dates are a symbol of friendship, of sharing, and the assassin is the provocative counterpoint. Wir wollen also mit Datteln wollen wir Attentate auf die Köpfe verüben. We often get together to brainstorm. We complement each other well. For our videos, we mostly draw on personal experience. I'm a woman, I'm visibly Muslim, so obviously my experiences are very different from those of the guys. I think there are stereotypes, the subservient Muslim girl, the stupid Muslim girl, the underage Muslim girl. Those are the things people imagine or expect. That's not me at all, but it must be because I wear a headscarf. Other people seem to find that confusing. I've studied the Bible and the Quran, all three monotheistic religions, and came to the conclusion that all three religions are one and the same. All three have the same concept of a supernatural power. And for me, Islam provides the answers that bring all of them together and complete them. I would describe myself as a very contemplative person. I think it's important not to make judgments about other people. Sometimes I find it difficult, but who doesn't? Christians and Muslims who say that Islam and Christianity are incompatible probably haven't spent much time with a person of the other religion. The recitation of the surahs is very melodious. The sound puts you into a spiritual mood. It often happens that I say my own private prayer when I'm standing next to him. I'm a barkeeper. I own a bar and I totally enjoy seeing people have a good time. Dass ich Menschen eine schöne Zeit hier bereiten kann.
Wir haben uns gedacht, das sieht richtig cool aus. Das ist We thought it would look really cool. And it's really accessible. A flying carpet and dates. They're things without any negative connotations. And we associated them with Islam, which has negative connotations for a lot of people. The kids responded really well to it. No problem. This is Berlin Panko, where I grew up. Oh, German is Panko? More German than I look, I would say. Literally, I didn't fit into the picture at all. I hated flying to Syria or Jordan during the summer holiday because I knew I would get browner, darker. It wasn't like I was always treated as if I were different, not really. But when you're a kid, it only takes two or three decisive moments. In preschool, there was a song we used to sing sometimes, The Black Peter is out and about. And I'd always be pushed into the middle of the circle, and the other kids would point at me. I wasn't allowed to be truly German, that's the feeling I had. I love my family more than anything. I love spending time with them. We do a lot together. My nieces are called Anouk and Lotta. And I'm Uncle Fita. I remember I counted those beads once. Hmm. That's right, you did. There are 99. They're prayer beads. Have you ever seen them in church when you're with your mom? They're similar to this. Those are called rosaries. And it's almost the same thing. I don't really talk about or discuss my religion with my nieces. They should have the freedom to make their own decisions and form their own views. I have met a lot of people who, how should I put it, proselytize. It makes me sick. It has nothing to do with Islamic values or Islamic conduct. That's not so schlimm. My road to faith was a short one. When I was 17, I started contemplating the world. Then, around Christmas 2008, I saw a movie called Monsieur Ibrahim and the Flowers of the Koran with my parents. And I said to them, hey, Mama, I like telling it like this because it's how it really happened. Hey, Mom, where's our Koran? And then I spent the whole week thinking about it. And then one evening I lay in bed and thought, God, if you exist, then let me know. Give me some sign. And for a whole week I was bombarded with signs. I remember being in Norway on vacation, the whole family. And one night I was outside looking at the stars, and when I went back inside into the dark cabin, I saw Fita on a carpet, praying in the dark. I was sort of taken aback. I didn't say anything to him because he was completely absorbed in prayer, but I could see with my own eyes that it was the real deal, that he was really serious. What was the key to your success? I'm often asked that today. I look back and think of the people who believed in me. It was very important to my dad that we thought about things when we were still very young, that we learned German and Arabic. 
because he wanted us to have a good future. Weil er sich gewünscht hat, dass wir ja eine gute Zukunft einfach haben. Ich habe mal I participated in a video project for young Muslims. I played the part of a news anchor, and I thought the idea behind it was really worthwhile. I often ask myself, when will we live in a society in which we don't only talk about equal opportunity, but actually live it? Wunsch oder Realität? Das entscheidest du. I once worked with a panel of journalists. There was a discussion session. They thought I was really nice, but they said, we wouldn't hire you with the headscarf. To me, freedom means being able to live as I choose, that I don't restrict others, nor am I restricted by them. That I continue to live within the laws that apply to everyone, but at the same time, I'm able to experience inner peace, that I'm able to follow my inner consciousness and make my own choices, and I can think for myself. Von mir aus geht. Ah, you want a cola? Sure. Marcel has a bar, and of course he sells alcohol. I can't help him sell alcohol. I don't do that. I also don't carry any alcohol or help him stack crates or whatever. I can't support him in that way. And he knows all that, and it was never a problem. Of course, there are limits, simply from a religious standpoint. One reason for me to go to Marcel's bar, the kind of place I'd never usually go, is to see Marcel. Because he's a friend and I'm really fond of him. It means a lot to me that they stop by at the bar. It shows that they care. They know that I would never expect them to come to the bar, but they come anyway. It's their way of saying, we respect and really appreciate what you achieved. You've created something for yourself. It's not our thing, but we know that it means a lot to you, and that's why we stop by. We realized we had to create a counterbalance so that people who might be toying with the idea of taking that grim and dangerous step might rethink it. Für diesen schrecklichen Weg zu entscheiden, irgendwie noch abzufangen. Dieses Quälen, Töten, Vernichten. We think someone should expose the ridiculousness of these fanatics because we don't want ISIS to achieve its goal of spreading fear and terror. My dad and I get on great. You get hate mail? Oh yeah, sure. Especially when Naomi appears in a video wearing her headscarf. Then all the guys who are against Islam react. Well, I'm concerned sometimes, sure. We saw what happened to Charlie Hebdo. Caricatures were published, and then the magazine staff was murdered. I'm not, and I don't think any of the others are, afraid that something will happen to us. We think there's not much difference between making videos that attack them directly or standing on a public square where a bomb can go off. We're convinced that we have to keep on doing this, because otherwise they will win. You could say I'm a full-time professional Muslim. I've deliberately chosen this path. I work with Muslims in need of assistance. 
Of course, that means radicalized Muslims sometimes. The problem is that they usually don't view themselves as radical. Then we try to figure out if it's really a radicalization. Often it's not. Much of the time the fear is greater than the reality. Statistics show that there are more far-right-wing attacks in this country than attacks carried out by Muslims. But still the focus is always on the Islamic sector, however you want to call it. Our attention is drawn in that direction. People are encouraged to think that way. If the guy has a long beard or a woman wears a headscarf, people are encouraged to be suspicious and we are damaged by it because that general suspicion never disappears. Appears. I understand that people fear the unknown, but I don't understand why people react with aggression, brutality, xenophobia. I don't understand that. It's okay to feel afraid, but know your fear and what you are actually frightened of. Europe is not in the grip of terrorism. There is a danger, but if you really think about it rationally, you are more likely to die of alcohol poisoning. We have a big problem with drug abuse and traffic accidents or cancer, but people aren't afraid of that. Why not? Let's say a neo-Nazi goes to a doctor. Yeah, okay. You're a right-wing extremist? No, you have neo-Nazi-itis. I'm sorry, but you're a neo-Nazi. I'm sorry, but there's a simple cure. Grow your hair out. And right-wing extremists are often called brown pigs. We could use a term like that. Guten Tag. Das ist die Geschichte, wie sich zwei Leute in Füchse verwandeln und was danach geschah. I'm sorry, your name is Mr. Brown. Brown. That's good. That fits. Okay. I have a problem. I hate Jews and Muslims. I simply hate everyone who isn't German. When I was a kid at Sunday school, I always put up my hand for the Christmas play. I want the main part, please, please. So I'd be in the spotlight. And I have to admit, I've always been a bit of a ham. I'm sorry, Mr. Brown. I'm very sorry, but you have alt-right-itis. <laughs> Acting's a lot of fun. Even as a kid, I loved imitating people. Fita is an all-rounder. I'd say that Fita can do anything. He's very good at putting himself into somebody else's shoes. And he can play a sleazy salesman. I'm good for real estate agents, guys like that. I can play the straight man who's a little sleazy. That works well. What a distinction. <laughs> So yes, let's cook. <laughs> I'm really hungry. I have eggs. So do I. Our flat share is really laid back. Everyone can do what they like, when they like. But we still share a sense of community. Of course, we want to reach the Muslim community with our Dateltäter project, but not just them, not exclusively. We also want to speak to the greater community. That's almost more important to us. So I think it's really good that somebody in the group belongs to the social majority. Klar. Of course I'm a feminist. Would I take off my headscarf for the sake of a job? No. I live in the here and now, and at the moment I wear it out of conviction. I don't even think about it. I like it, I think it's great, and I'll keep it. But that could change. 
Ich weiß nicht, I don't know whether I'll believe in another religion or philosophy in five years. Maybe then I'll say, hey, the headscarf is irrelevant to me now. I don't want to wear it anymore. I just don't know. There are imbalances in the Muslim community just as there are in the non-Muslim community. Of course, I don't like it when I have to pray in an unattractive room in the mosque because I'm a woman. And I have to be in a place where, rather than practicing my religion and feeling close to God, I get upset that I have to look at a mess. Well, the men get to be in a beautiful room. When I have an assignment for the university or need to research something, I go see my mother. I used to do that in high school too. She's a librarian, which is lucky for me. And she works at the Humboldt University. So I go there and she gives me access to every conceivable data bank and to books. And I've got a quiet place to work. When I'm in New York, I should definitely visit a mosque. Maybe I can talk to the people there. That's something I'd really like to do. When he told us that he had become a Muslim, it was too late to do anything about it. But that was the moment when you say to yourself as a parent, depending on how you react, you'll either keep your child or lose him. And we wanted to keep him. Wir hatten unseren ersten Shitstorm. Was so ein Shitstorm mit sich bringt, ist natürlich jede Menge Kommentare. Was bedeutet, jede Menge Stoff für ein tolles neues Video. Ihr Muselratten seid doch der letzte Dreck. Verpiss dich, Dreckskanacken. Nimm dir einen Strick. I think there are no limits to creativity when people are being hateful. They even invent unbelievable new vocabulary words. What do you think? Wow. There are hardly any comments that make me think, why am I doing this? On the contrary, they motivate me. That's exactly the reason why it's so important that we carry on. Iftar is the breaking of the fast right after sunset. The purpose is to make you realize what it means when you have everything. When you give up things that you are used to having for a while, you come to realize how truly valuable they are. I don't know where to start, there's so much. <laughs> At least your father laughed. It's also uncomplicated. Boundaries are broken with a smile certain boundaries that we have in our German culture. A question like, can I stay to dinner? That would be an impolite question for them. You simply assumed you'll stay, you can't refuse. I think that's really nice. Mr. Abbas, I have a hunch. Where are you from? Berlin. Right. Yeah. Cut. The idea for the video, well, it's something we'd all been thinking about. We asked ourselves, what is actually German? And can you exclude certain things, like people often do?
We've decided to focus on the issue of integration and the demands that are made from the various sides, and we make fun of all that. We need dialogue, and we have to tear down barriers. I mean, the barriers that people have in their heads. Muslims have them, Germans have them. Everyone has to find their place in the world. And you can only find your place with the help of everyone else. Ah, da kommen jetzt so Credits, nein, Spaß. Ja,